Hi everyone, Dr. Krahe here. This week in chapter 3 we are talking about measures of central tendency. So mean, median, mode, uh, threw in a little bit of uh, weighted mean there for you, a little bit of skew, uh, kurtosis, just ways to describe data. So we're still in uh, descriptive statistics world, uh, so we have a set of data and we want to um, describe it. We want to communicate the overall sense of the data um, very concisely. So here I have a data set, uh, this is just a silly data set, um, looking at people that play Angry Birds and their level of aggression after, um, you know, one month of playing, six months, twelve months, and then we also have a baseline level of aggression here. So how do we find the mean, median, mode, all of those kinds of things? So we are still going to analyze we are under descriptive statistics. We'll be here for a while. Last week we were in frequencies. We're going to go there again. So remember, frequencies can be very good to show us people in different groups. We can also, uh, if we go over here and go to statistics, it has all of these measures of central tendency right here. So we can check mean, we want the median, we want the mode. We can get quartiles if we want those. We can get measures of dispersion, which we'll talk about next week. So we'll be down here next week. We can also get skewness and kurtosis. Uh, so we'll talk about that in another lecture. I'm going to hit continue here. Uh, you should remember this charts option. We can get bar charts, pie charts, histograms. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, get a histogram there for fun. We'll also display frequency tables. So you can hit paste and you'll get the syntax that I'm trying to encourage you to use if you would like. Uh, or you can hit OK and it will run those results. Just to demonstrate, I hit paste. So here's your syntax. You can highlight it and hit play. Your output window opens. Uh, a couple of things about this. Uh, up top it's going to give you your syntax again over here on the left. So if you're uh, you know, running your dissertation you'll get a long list of output here so you can skip through it a little bit faster with this kind of thing. You know, Just a couple of analyses. We don't really need it. So to our output, what does this mean? We have n valid 84. We have 84 people in our data set. We have our mean, median, mode. We have our mean 2.45, median 2.5, mode is 3. So our arithmetic mean, center point, mathematical balancing point, 2.45, the median, that middle point, remember, uh, order out your data set from smallest to largest, what is in the center, 2.5, and then mode, our most frequent score is a 3. Skew, 0 0.096, uh, kurtosis, negative 0 0.470. So here the skew and kurtosis is looking, it's really an assessment of normality. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we'll talk about that in the other lecture. Hopefully you've watched that already. Um, but my guideline for interpreting these numbers, if this number is between negative 2 and positive 2, you are fine. You do not have any violations. You have approximately normal data, at least enough for the purposes of this course. Now, different people will say different things, um, but, you know, we're in an undergraduate statistics class. We're not trying to uh, save lives or determine the effectiveness of uh, revolutionary cancer treatment. So negative 2 to positive 2 for these numbers is a good threshold. So jot that down in your notes. Here's our frequency table. So we have uh, our different numbers, the frequency, the percentages, the valid percentages. So remember, if we had some missing data, these numbers would be different, and you would report the valid percent. You can see the cumulative percent here. So again, we're just building. Every week, we're going to add on to what we've already learned. Here we have our histogram. So you can see, um, again, bars are touching, because this is continuous data. It could be any number here. Um, this is a normal or a bell curve, a normal distribution or a bell curve laid over our data here. You can see they're pretty close, right? It looks pretty good, pretty close. Um, if uh, I, I should expect that because our skewness and kurtosis values are so close to zero, that's a very close approximation of a normal distribution. Again, we'll talk about this later in more detail, but I just want to start giving you little glances into the future there. Now, that's it. That 
is how you find mean, median, mode. Um, most typical thing we'll be dealing with in this uh, course will be the mean. So the mean is used in a lot of different things. Uh, it's used in t-tests, those kinds of things. So we will talk about the mean a whole, whole lot. Let me show you quickly. We will um, we'll also be using Excel in this course. Excel is a very um, I don't know, it's one of my favorite programs. Uh, it's pretty base. We get it uh, in most new PC builds, so you probably have access to this for free. If you don't, please do go download it from IUWare. As we start talking uh, next week about uh, variability, we'll be doing some calculations in Excel. So anyway, I have a set of data here, data from 21 people we want to find the mean. So everyone will do this differently. I prefer that you do it the way I do it just because, I don't know, that's the way I do it. But if you already know the menu driven way, go ahead and just do that. Uh, but what I'll encourage you to do is uh, enter formulas. So you start by entering equals. For the mean, we know that the arithmetic mean is also known as the average. So we're going to do equals average open parentheses and we're just gonna select our data we're saying we want the average of all of this data hit enter the mean there is zero to find the median equals you can type in median open parentheses select the data hit enter mode equals mode and then enter the data. So what is our mathematical balancing point, our mean, our, our, um, our average, the arithmetic mean in this sample of data right here is zero. Our median, so if we ordered these numbers from smallest to largest and found the middlemost number, that is zero. Mode, our most frequent number is also zero. So that's how you find these things in Excel and in SPSS. I think it should be pretty straightforward for you, uh, but if you do have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact me.